I've played Amnesia the Bunker for about two hours, and in my brief time playing this game, I can confidently say that this is a very well crafted and scary experience. For anybody looking for a brief review of the bunker without going too deep into spoilers, then this is going to be the video for you. Being as I myself have only played it for a couple hours, I've yet to see the end game, and footage wise, you're probably only going to see maybe the first hour or so of gameplay. Now I myself am a huge horror fan, whether that be with video games, movies, or just media in general. I love experiencing the horror genre in everything it has to offer. The horror genre, especially in video games, can fall into a weird trap sometimes where the more games you play of the certain genre, the more desensitized you become to it. Like I said, I haven't played a ton of different horror games, so Amnesia the Bunker still gets me. There's a lot of moments, whether that be jump scares or just tension building and atmospheric moments, that are still really scary to me and are actually keeping me on the edge of my seat. So if you're someone who isn't desensitized completely to the horror genre, I think this game's definitely going to be a good fit for you. If you're someone who is desensitized to it, it might be fun in the sense of there are puzzles here, and there definitely should be some creepy moments regardless, but it might not be as scary to you as it is to me. Regardless, let's get into the bunker. Starting off the game by loading it up, you're going to adjust your settings, the typical stuff when you're starting a new game. You're playing as a soldier in World War I on the French side. You're just thrown into a trench and given some light tutorials as to how the game functions and the different controls here. After running through the trenches, reloading your gun, figuring out how to pick up things, like I said, tutorial stuff, you eventually have to rescue a friendly soldier. In that rescue attempt, the German soldiers spot you and you are essentially knocked out. Then you wake up in the bunker and this is really where the fun begins. This is where the horror comes into play. That first maybe 10 to 15 minutes of the introduction really isn't that scary at all. I mean, it has the atmosphere for sure. You can hear the gunshots and explosions and all the yelling of a World War I combat scenario, but it's not really scary, aside from one jump scare in that little section there. But once you're thrown into this actual bunker is really where this game shines, because that's where the bulk of the gameplay is going to be. You start off an infirmary and you just kind of find some notes along the way while you're going into this little rations area and you find an actual alive soldier. He hands you a pistol and asks you to kill him because he'd rather be dead and go out by the hand of somebody else as opposed to whatever creature is lurking in here. After you find some ammo for that pistol he gave you, he is taken away by whatever creature is in this bunker with you. And this is really going to be where everything that this game has to offer is coming into play. You now know that this bunker is extremely dark, you have a weapon with extremely limited ammo, and you also get a flashlight here which you have to wind up. Winding up the flashlight causes a lot of noise and this monster is able to hear you. After this person is whisked away by this mysterious force that's in this bunker, you make your way to the generator room where this is basically going to be your main hub for the remainder of the game. There's a generator that you're able to use if you find gas cans lying around to refill it. Whatever creature lives in this bunker doesn't seem to like the light very much. So keeping the lights on is definitely going to be the best option here. The generator will provide light around the whole facility with various switches you can flip elsewhere in the facility in order to light your path. This game is very puzzle focused and while the puzzles I've really encountered aren't too intensive, you're going to be doing a lot of backtracking because if you're like me, you might not be the smartest and you miss a thing or two here and there. I remember walking through corridors wondering what I'm supposed to be doing when eventually I died, respawned, went the same exact way I did, and just looked to my right and figured out what it was I was supposed to do. The bunker in and of itself is pretty large, or at least in the little area that I've played so far, and there's various corpses and blood trails and things going on. If you're into the lore of the game, you can find various notes lying around, and you can read that to get a greater sense of immersion into what the world of the bunker has to offer. For now, all you really need to know is, you're alone, essentially, in this bunker. You're the only living thing that you know of, aside from whatever creature lies within. And this creature you can hear from a mile away. You'll notice around all the different hallways, there's various holes in the wall. The creature is able to come out of these holes. Make too much noise, you'll hear him get closer. Get too close to that hole when you know he's over there, he'll grab you and take you in. Quite honestly, for the first 45 minutes of playing this game, I knew that the holes were there, but didn't think the creature would actually come out of them for some reason. Because you can hear the creature around you almost at all times. You can hear him moving around. 
Sometimes he sounds like he's right there, but you don't see a hole in your direct vicinity. So sometimes the sound design of this game can play a trick on you, but that also might be by design. It lets you think that you're always being watched and always being hunted, and in some case you are. But once again, if you make too much noise, this monster will know where you're at, and it will go towards one of those holes. You might not be able to see it, but if you get too close to that hole while that monster is actively in there, it'll pull you in and kill you, reset you to your last save. Speaking of saves, in that main hub area near where that generator is, you're able to find a map and you're able to find a lantern in which you are able to save the game. You can't take that lantern with you, your only source of light aside from the generator provided light is going to be that wind up flashlight that you have. You're able to find some gas cans laying around to refill that generator and sync up a stopwatch you get to know how much time you have left until the lights go out. While the lights are on, you're not completely safe. The monster is still around you, you can still hear him, no matter what corridor you go into, it's basically always right there. The light is just a little bit of a deterrent for it, and it makes you feel just a little bit safer in the long run. But if you're in one of these corridors when the lights go out, then that's when all hell can break loose. This monster might come out and attack you, it might chase you, and you might just find yourself cornered and having to hide from this thing. Again, I've only played this game for a brief amount of time, but the atmosphere of this game is just something else. Graphics wise, it looks very good, it's not like a true next gen game, because I do believe it is available on PS4 and the Xbox One, but the game does look very good, and it doesn't really take me out of the experience by not having it be photorealistic. Not every game even needs to be. Like I said, there's various puzzles around. You basically find out from the get-go that your way of escaping this bunker is to blow up an exit that somebody already blew up. They essentially exploded the entrance, which made you locked in here, in order for them to keep this monster at bay. But your goal is to get out. So you need to find some explosives in order to clear the debris that has been put there to keep you in. You have various tools you can utilize for survival in the bunker. As stated previously, there is weapons you can find, however, ammo is extremely scarce, so really only use it in a last ditch effort. You can find some bottles laying around that you can put in your inventory and throw to kind of lure in another direction. Sometimes you can find some rotting meat that you can put down as a lure to get them away from your location as well. There's various things you can find as weapons or deterrents in the bunker, but overall, you're never really safe. Every so often in these corridors, you will find wire traps. You need to make sure that you can jump over these things, because triggering it will cause an explosion, you'll die, and have to reset from your last checkpoint. Like I said, the checkpoint system is when you last saved. So you might want to travel back to the generator room every so often, just to make sure you don't lose too much progress if this creature finds you and kills you. Again, atmosphere-wise, this game is very well crafted. In terms of glitches, I have really only found one thing, and it was when I was healing myself when I was hiding under a table. You could see my character clipping through it when I was doing the healing animation. It didn't necessarily take me out of the game, but it is something to note. Otherwise, this game really hasn't had any issues for me so far. The controls were a little bit weird at the start, but I chalked that up to being just the amnesia style of gameplay, and I haven't played an amnesia game before. Now you get used to it pretty quickly though. It is a horror game after all, so it's not really too thought intensive as to what controls you need to do. You're able to close and open doors, which sometimes can be a little finicky, especially if you're not sure which way the door actually opens, but that's besides the point. This game looks very well, and the atmosphere is very creepy all around. The lights continuously flicker, the sound design is just something else. Again, as stated, you can hear this creature almost anywhere you are. Making any sort of noise, whether that be winding up your flashlight, shooting, or even just walking, can attract this creature to your location. So if that generator goes out, you're going to want to make sure you're making as little noise as possible. Again, I haven't beaten this game yet, so I don't know what the actual end game is like, so maybe the ending is super disappointing. But in my brief time of a couple hours playing this game, I've been having a ton of fun with it, and it's really keeping me on the edge of my seat. And I am super excited to continue on playing this game and eventually beating it. I think this game is for sure worth checking out. As stated previously, this atmosphere is something else. It really does keep you on the edge of your seat and it's very creepy overall. The monster design, the little bit of it I've seen, is very creepy. And overall, this game really is well crafted and it knows how to scare you. If you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, this game is included with it. So you're not losing anything by checking it out. 
overall as a horror game, Amnesia the Bunker is very good, and I would definitely recommend giving it a try. So what are your opinions on Amnesia the Bunker? Have you tried it out yet? Are you thinking about trying it? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!